I got for you. It takes place in 1991. I think it's 91 or 92. You'll have to ask my mom. She knows better than I do. I, I kind of have trouble remembering which year it is, but it seems like it was 1991, 92. That was when Don't Tell Her It's Me, which actually is based on a book called The Boyfriend School, uh, which is the original title. Now they've retitled the movie. That anyway, just check it out. It's a great movie. That movie was really big with me anyway, and you know, there's a a few other things that were going on. I think Lethal Weapon. Three was coming out the next year, and anyway, that was the year that we lost our house. Now, what happened was, my mom and my dad, my mom's stepdad, <laughs> he's my dad too, you know. My parents got a phone call from the bank. The bank basically told them that their house had been foreclosed on, and that they only had a certain amount of time to pack up and get out. So we spent that weekend packing everything up, and we took off and emptied the house left and we went and got us another house which was clear on the other side of town and we ended up uh, moving into a duplex now this duplex housed six people me my stepdad my two baby sisters and my uncle who was kind of in and out you know, he was mostly Stan's friends uh, he has since passed on you know God rest his soul John you know, I worked night shift with Kroger, and I would go in and work at night and come in in the morning and try to get some sleep in that place, and I remember just being just dead cold. You know, it's constantly cold all the time, and um, it was just really expensive to run the heater in that place, but, you know, it was a small, tiny little place. You know. And the ironic part of this whole thing, my parents also got a phone call at the end of that week telling them from the bank saying, Oh gee, well we, we screwed up, you know, uh, there was a clerical error, um, you know, you really didn't lose your house, uh, so basically what ended up happening was my parents got their house back, and, uh, I, um, hang on, um, parents got their house back, and we took everything that we had just packed up, unpacked, had to repack it, and move back to our house, which at this point was now an empty shell. And uh, I remember walking through my bedroom, which was empty, and just walking around looking around and thinking, I'm one of the luckiest guys on the planet because I have such, I'm so blessed. You know, I, I don't have a Christmas, I don't have any presents, you know, no one's going to be exchanging anything, but I have my house back. And to me, that's been the greatest Christmas story ever in my life. The greatest Christmas ever that I've ever had. And it taught me to, be to believe that if you have absolutely nothing, you have more than you think you do. There are people in countries that don't have anything. I mean, anything. They're dying of malnutrition. They're dying of disease. It's a mess. And I look at my life and I'm like, you know, I got it pretty good considering, all things considered. And that's how I thought about that day, that's how I felt, so I thought, I thought, I'm very blessed to have the situation I have. And we all packed everything up, moved back to that house, and um, celebrated our little family Christmas together. And, like I said, it's the greatest Christmas I've ever had. Um, I hope your Christmas is a great one. I hope you have a very happy, happy new year. And come back in 2012 when the world is supposed to end, and um, you know we'll we'll just go down together. You know, it's gonna be good. Anyway, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Thanks for watching. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Like doing this whole number and I'm free.